In this video, we're going to look at how we can create a detailed new wavetable in Serum by importing audio. Specifically, we're going to make a nice, interesting bass sound. So let's create a detailed wavetable by importing audio. Because I've tried this a few times and I've made quite a few wavetables now, I know that you can get some great results by importing kick drum sound. So I'm going to navigate to a kick in my sample pack or one of the sample packs I made for the kick sounds. And we're going to pick one somewhat arbitrarily. All we need is some form of body and something else happening. And we'll probably have a cool result at the end of this. So. Let's try this one. It's definitely different. It's got a bit of a knocking quality. Probably going to result in quite a messy industrial mechanical sound, but that should still sound cool. So let's give it a go with that one and see how it works out. Now, when it comes to importing this kick, it is as simple as dragging it into the wavetable display bit here. And then all you have to do is choose an import option, which to be honest, most of the time, I reckon just pick one randomly and see if it sounds cool. However, technically there is a big difference between say the top three and the bottom four. In particular, the bottom four split up the input sample not factoring in pitch, they simply slice it up at every division, depending on what number is after FFT. So if you slice it up every, say, 512 samples, then you want to choose FFT 512 and so on. However, the top three typically at least try to factor in pitch. So it will keep, let's say, let's say you imported a synth sound that was a defined note, then you would choose constant frame rate pitch average. Whereas if that synth sound also had a bit of pitch envelope, you might want to try dynamic pitch follow and so on. But in general, I'm going to recommend, especially when you're quite new to this, just pick one randomly and hopefully you get a cool result. So I think dynamic pitch follow should be pretty cool in this case. And there you go. You can see our kick in the wavetable editor. However, it's pretty jumpy and most of that wavetable is actually empty space. So we can fix that. We remove the empty space by navigating to the last frame we want to remove. So that'll probably be, let's say, around nine or eight. Let's say, let's say eight. And then we'll do add remove, remove selected to end. And you can see now we purely have seven cycles, seven frames in our wave table. However, because we only have seven frames, It moves in this jumpy, discrete way. We want to add some morph tables in there to basically interpolate between those frames and create a nice, smooth transition through the wavetable. But before we do the morphing, let's do a bit of simple processing just to make sure we have as clean of a bass sound as we possibly can. Let's remove any DC offset. Remember, if we want to process a single frame, we choose single. If we want to process the entire wavetable, we choose process. In this case, we want to do the entire wavetable. Remove DC offset and it removes any, in this case, a tiny amount, but a little bit of DC offset. Now, I also think it's a good idea to normalize because you could either be clipping, like you can see a little bit down there, it's clipping a tiny amount after that DC offset shift we did, or maybe in the case of some other examples, you're not taking advantage of all the available space in the waveform, so you might need to turn up the level of all the frames a little bit. So we'll do process and normalize the same, so we'll affect each frame with the same amount of gain reduction or increase. In other words, we're normalizing the maximum of all the frames. Cool stuff. In this case, we reduced the level a little bit because we were clipping at that peak down there, which is now no longer clipping. And that is all the simple processing we need. Now all we need to do is do a bit of morphing to create those intermediate, those interpolated frames in between the seven frames we currently have. Remember, a complete wavetable is 256 frames. So as I do morph, morph spectral zero fundamental phase, look what happens to the numbers above these cycles and also look what happens to the cycles themselves as I click morph. So notice the numbers have increased because we've created all the intermediate frames and the cycles themselves have had to be changed a little bit, but that's fine. We needed to do that to get this nice smooth blending of the cycles as we move through the wavetable. So check this out. Pretty cool, right? Let's maybe attach an LFO to it so you can hear what it's like being modulated. How 
I think in this case, what I want to do is use the filter drive trick. So low pass filter, mix to zero and turn up the drive to thicken it up and add a bit of saturation, keeping our eye on the master so we don't clip. Oh, perfect. Pretty cool, right? We now have this nice, heavy, aggressive bass sound which we could then maybe run through some reverb or whatever other processing we want to do. And there you go, that is how we can create a detailed new wavetable by importing audio. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.